And there we go, everyone. We are back again for another fantastic conversation on Friday Night Counter-Attack. We're rocking, we're rolling in a new part of the studio today. So I'm looking forward to talking all things European football. And no, it's not because Man United lost recently against Liverpool. We are focusing on our European friends across the continent. And we've got some talks about some late last minute transfers. We've got some incredible conversations about the leagues that are starting up and how they'll impact the UEFA Champions League and the Europe League going forward. And I thought, you know what, let me get Friday Night Counter-Attack's second best European expert. Sorry, it's first. Second is Matthew from Back to Net Podcast. I'm I'm always going to be humble and be like, yeah, I'm fit. <laughs> I was going to think where you're going to put yourself. That's what I'm waiting for. <laughs> nah, I, I said it on my group chat once. Like, my, my, on my group chat, I've got um, Thomas, who's a Nigerian video editor. He lives in Scotland. Shout out, Thomas. I haven't shouted you out for a while now. And he was talking about the signing of Victor Osterman. And I was like, I'm the, probably the third, maybe the fourth best person to speak to about Nigerian football. I was like, big up, Travis. We've got to, got to be in there as well, which is good. But Matthew, it's good to see you. Your club is shining right now, Arsenal Football Club, so I'm hoping you're enjoying the start to the season. Um, but we are going to be focusing our turn. We're going to focus in Istanbul first, Matthew. But first of all, how are you doing? And let me hear your first thoughts on Victor Osimhen to Galatasaray, which sounds so odd to say. First of all, thanks for having me on, thanks for having me, having me on again, bro. Um, listen. Pleasure. Osimhen, Galatasaray. I don't, do you know what he's, I don't think anyone expected it. I, I feel like, for me personally, I felt like the whole Chelsea move not happening. I thought, you know, is it De Laurentiis? That guy, is, we'll get into him at some point, I guess. But I kind of felt he was just being the reserves, won't play till Jan and then get a move. But then, obviously, I forgot some of these leagues, the windows was kind of still open. So, um, yeah, listen, it's a fantastic move. I think for him, because he gets to play, but I think the Chelsea move is going to happen anyway. But it's just like a... It's probably like a clause in the contract. That's it's a reverse Didier Drogba. Drogba this is like it. Chelsea's oh, first. Yeah, yeah, it's true, actually. Forgot about that. Mm. Well, yeah, yeah, Didier did play there, didn't it? I forgot about that randomly. Didier Drogba and Wesley Schneider in that same team. Oof, they almost yeah, challenged Real Madrid in that Champions League campaign. Oh, mate. But yeah, like, listen, good move for him. It was a long protracted, drawn out process with him and Chelsea and Napoli and whatever, but is what it's like. But now he's got a move, so he must be happy. Yeah, it's true. I mean, just a few facts for our audience about Victor Osimhen as well. The fact that he's still 25 years old, is still in the peak of his career, only a season or two. Well, last season, he got to that one final, um, which is incredible to see. Season before that, he led Napoli with Kovicic Kvartskelia to eternal greatness by winning the Scudetto, which is incredible. But Victor Osimhen has kind of dug himself into a very, very big hole where you look at one of the best strikers in world football right now and Victor Osimhen moving away from Serie A and let's let's just get straight into it because I'm looking at the reports, I've been reading a lot about it as well, speaking with Sarah about it and yeah, we mentioned before about De Laurentiis as well, he confirmed that he was set to leave back in January but realistically speaking, Matthew, no one really could really afford him unless it was Saudi Arabia, but they didn't want to pay the fee that Napoli set for him. Chelsea didn't want to pay his wages after signing a whole load of players this summer as well. And when you're looking at all the other options as well, they just never came close to it. There was never any concrete opportunity. In come Galatasaray, who we know like to take players at the end of their tenure as a top player. We've seen them who are getting players at 30 years old, 35 mm -hmm. years old, and we've seen that in the Turkish League. And this has given the Turkish League a well-deserved wow. boost because we've seen some incredible players, some incredible um, talents go there. And even Wilfred Zaha has left for Olympic Lyon. This Lyon yeah. And that was kind of the driving force where they're like, you know what, let's get another superstar into this team and let's get someone who no one expects us to bring in. Mm -hmm. And they got Victor Osimhen. You know what? Don't you find though? Because I was thinking, I don't know about the Turkish league and Turkish league and finances. I was like, that's a bit mad. Like they managed to get that one done. I know? think the league's going to be helping them out. Like the MLS helped out. Yeah, with that's the yeah. Miami as well. They've got to because they're bringing a lot more people over now as well. And mm -hmm. Even the. <laughs> Even the Turkish, even the even the Turkish Instagram pages of like Galatasaray and the Turkish Superliga, they're tweeting in Niger now as well. In what? <laughs> what is, is so it? Fun. It's so funny just seeing it. They're tweeting so they know that they're getting the audience from Nigeria. <laughs> There's going to be more charter flights over to from from Turkish Airways going to Istanbul this season. Yeah, yeah. The best striker in Africa is off to Istanbul, and this is it's big, it's it's very mad. big thing to it's see. Mad. 
I'm going to go through the Galatasaray team in a second, but let me hear your final thoughts on Galatasaray and what it kind of means to the league. Because remember Jose Mourinho at Fenerbahce, you've got Besiktas who are always solid as well. Let's hear your final thoughts on it before I go through the team and what the starting lineup could look like for Galatasaray. And by the way, for our audience, we know we talk about European football. It's very odd to be talking about Turkish football as well. I'm very happy for our yeah. North London contingent and our Turkish contingent. To to hear this now, you, you know what? I feel like the Turkish league, like when you talk about top leagues, it's never really in a top five league. We most people only take notice when it's Galatasaray versus Fenerbahce. Or do you remember that? Remember that there was that team that come up? Um, was it Istanbul? Fashik. A long name. B B. Yeah, them. Fashik. That's so, well, why I, I, I know you can. I know you can pronounce it. You know, you know, you know, you know, okay. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. So unless them teams are playing, no one really takes notice. But mm. I feel like when you sign these type of players, suddenly you're like, oh, okay. And I'm not saying it's the same type of thing. But if you look at Messi when he went to um, MLS. Yes. It's the same thing. It draws more fans in. And I feel like this is that type of move. I don't think Wilfred Zaha had the same type of effect where players... Wilfred like, oh, Zaha, Zaha was only big in South London. And when someone's only big in South London, they know they're too big for their boots. And, oh, yeah, we go to Galatasaray. Yeah, yeah, yeah he, got I mean, a great, he got a great arrival, but Hakim yeah. Ziyech had a more star appeal. Icardi, Mertens, they had more star appeal than Icardi Wilfred Icardi and Victor Oshiman. Are you deep in that? Are you deep Michi in... Batshuayi as well on, on, the, on the bench too. What a team, what a team, what a team. And but you know what? And it's gonna be great because I think Fenerbahce, Mourinho's probably sitting there going, Oh, I thought I had it this year. And you know, Sophia and Amrabat in the summer, and this is what's happened. And who are who that star boy Fred as well? Don't forget. Fred with forget. a hat trick. You know what I mean? So no, like listen, I will now be watching out for what's going on there. I won't watch all the games, but now it's a bit more intriguing to see mm. what's gonna happen with them, them type of clubs. But great move. I, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be enjoyable because you're looking at some of these teams as well. Fenerbahce, like we mentioned as well. Dusan Tadic is still there. Our boy Edin Dzeko is still there. Come on now. Playing Maxima yeah. moving from Saudi Arabia to Turkey, which is a great move for him. So I didn't know. Do you know what? I'm, the, I'm, I, I'm always honest. I never knew he moved it. When did that happen? The big one for me. I thought this was already the biggest one for me. Yeah. Seeing Yusuf and Nasiri from Sevilla yeah. move to Fenerbahce. What? Oh, my God. Um, even though we see this is the thing, guys. Even though we know ball... It happens. There's so many transfers. No, but ev- every now and then, though, the audience will be honest with themselves as well. There'll, there'll be transfers that you don't know that <laughs> yeah. happen. And this is our time to get through the leagues and go, you know what? I never knew this happened. And yeah, yeah. It's going to be interesting for another. Exactly. So this is our excuse for the season, Matthew. So when I'm yeah. saying, oh, yeah, by the way, remember Su- 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 you used to play for Leicester, now that Fenerbahce. Yeah. You can't yeah. say, no, you never told me. It's on yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I used to like him, by the way. I used to really like Su- 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 I thought it would have been pretty good to see yeah, that as well, yeah. but... I mean, just final one on um, Galatasaray as well. They're also linked with a move, a loan move mm. to Casemiro. You, you know, I just can't afford to sell him though. I can't you, see you, you, you know what I'm saying is, it's just one of those where we take a big, big loss, and then we're then we're then without him for a position as well. That's so it, yeah, he's going to have to go through the hard yards once again, Casemiro as mm. well, which is crazy. And before we get into Matthew, who's going to be talking a bit more about Serie A, the Spanish league, and maybe league earn as well, we just need to talk about something that Matthew and I have spoken about across the summer, but more on WhatsApp than actually in person. The players that are still available as a free agent, and you can still sign them right now because mm. they're without a club. So I'm going to go through a couple of players who are still without a club. So Memphis Depay, who had a pretty good European championships, getting to the semi-finals. He's 30 years old now. He's training and putting his social media content out there. He's still got so much to go for, Memphis Depay. Another point to prove. He's no longer no, no longer playing for Atletico Madrid. He, I don't think he's going to go back to the Eredivisie. Mm. And it's not looking good for Memphis Depay. Do you see him getting a move to a big club as a backup player? Or do you think his boots are too big for him to be on the bench like he was at Atletico Madrid last season? What do you think? I, I think it's like that. You know, the thing of Depay, he, he's not like a settled position guy. You know, mm-hmm. like he can play across what? He can do like the left winger. Left, centre forward, yeah, striker. Yeah, all yeah. of that. And the problem is there's a lot of teams where they don't need that type of player at the moment. Exactly. So I think that's how the best move for him right now, probably like a Saudi Arabia move, do like what Stephen Bergwin. Yeah. Might have got that. They might not be one of the top Saudi Arabia teams, but get the move, you know, and go get your money. Like exactly. I've been you. It's true. Get, get and a million pound a week. Everyone's going to be want to secure that back. It'll be fantastic. And free agent as well, which should be cool. Mm. Anthony Marshall. Oh my gosh. I forgot him as well. All right, Man United fans have forgotten about him as well. So 90 goals in 317 appearances for Manchester United. Still only 28 years of age as well. So it's very worrying that 
the, the club that's probably linked most to Memphis Depay is Lille. So it's one of those where you kind of like, yeah, let's wait and see what happens. He could be on the way to an MLS move perhaps as well if he mm-hmm. wanted to get some sun, some sunshine as well, get away from European football. But I still think he's got a point to prove in European football. Yeah. What do you think, Matthew? You know, with him, he just he's that type of player. I just feel like if he's new environment, new people around him, and just start again. New fitness he, regime too. Yeah, you know, he's, you, you don't lose certain talent. And yes. you know he's got it. He just looks disinterested sometimes. You know, when he went to, he didn't really like the world. He didn't yeah, like the world when he went to Sevilla. Um, but I know he's got it. He just needs mm. to, like you said, MLS might be a move. Yeah. Sometimes it might do a year there, get a big move somewhere else, you know, showcase your talents and see what you can do. Do a Giovinco. Yeah, he lost the love as well. And a bold one would be go to South America at times. You've seen some of these players go to South America. Mm-hmm. Douglas Costa's come out of um, free agency as well to go mm-hmm. to Australia. So it goes to show that. You have to, yeah. He's got some ball playing ability. He'll be absolutely mm-hmm. fine just playing ball again. Adrian Rabiot, who seems to be linked every summer to Manchester United. He's only 29. He left Juventus under the new regime of Thiago Motta as well. What's your thoughts on him? Would you take him in the Premier League? Because I think he's got a point to prove as well. Which would be good. I, I won't lie to you, Andrew. He's one of them players that I, I, I never see it with him. Mm-hmm. Like, I just look at when I see him play, I see him start for France. And like, what do you actually do? Like, I know mm-hmm. your mum complains and all that, and maybe that's why you're playing. But, you know, you know but it's true because. And I always see much of his mum, unfortunately. He's with Man United, this one, that one. I'm like, but what are you going to do at that club? I, I, mm-hmm. I don't know. I just don't see the talent there. That's my personal opinion. No, so, that's fair enough. Wherever he goes, because he was at Juve last, wasn't he? Before yes, he was. Like, yeah. yeah. Just like with Memphis, the Pies, heavily featured for his nation in the country, looking to get a job at the end of it. it just doesn't yeah. happen, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. Joel Matip. Oh, he could do a he could do a job somewhere. I when think I at Fulham him, would have been good. Or yeah, Crystal Palace would have been good. Yeah, I see a Bayern Liverpool type thing. Shout. I if they sold Bayern. Jonathan Tarr, that would have been a good move for yeah. him. Free transfer one season there. Yeah. Class for him as well. And the final one I really wanted to talk about is Mats Hummels as well. Apparently he's a finalist. Roma? Though. He's gone Roma, I think. Has it been confirmed for Roma? Supposedly, there was a here we go or here we land, there we land. There we land. Ooh, Yeah. Yeah. As we speak, done deal. Yeah. Four hours ago from Fabrizio Romano. Here we go. Yeah. That's good, that. Oh, we don't use here we go. He's there we land. because we're He's there we land. <laughs> Got to do it for our, our boy in London, which is good to see. So. Like a winner. <laughs> winner. He's a winner. Many, <laughs> which is great to see. So, Matt Summers looks like you've got a there we land, which is great. So. Don't you feel that, Hamza? I feel like that type of centre-back would be perfect. Someone like a Brighton. Mm. I It'd think be very cool to see. Experience, you know what I mean? And, you know, they could do something like that. But, yeah, Roma could move. Who is the, I don't even know who Roma manager is now. What's going on with him? Daniele De Rossi, because obviously we've Yes, of course. Because he's coming into... Okay, okay. A good segue into Serie A, which is good to see. So let's yeah. have a look at the table. Inter Milan and Juventus are still top, joint top mm-hmm. with Torino and Udinese. Mm-hmm. We've got Milan, who are in 14th. And we've got Roma, who are 17th, with only two points as well. So... I think, you know what, my thing that I wanted to really focus on was Juventus because Juventus have got a brand new manager who I've been singing his praises for around a year now in Thiago yeah, Motta. Yeah. And our group chat has been lit up in many different ways in, as to why um, this has happened with Thiago Motta as manager. And Joshua Adudonko quite prominently said, what's he going to do for Man United? And then you're seeing someone like Fabian Herzler, who's at Brighton, who's younger than Thiago Motta as well, mm. doing bits for Brighton already. So... Mm. This team, this new look Juventus team, is looking very, very exciting with Fagioli in the midfield. We've got Gleason Bremer still shining as well. Mm. Cambias on the right wing. Kenan Yildiz is doing bits of the new. Yeah, cooler. But there is a player that I'm going to introduce to our audience because he even beat Scout Hams in terms of being looked at as well. And you may need to help me with pronunciation. So um, his name is Samuel Mbangula. He's a left winger. Um, he's been 20, he's 20 years old as well he's from Belgium and he looks like he's going to be the bee's knees for Juventus and for Thiago Motta this season because mm. already in the three games that he's played in Serie A he's scored a goal and he's got two assists already so Samuel Mbangula I may have mispronounced your name <laughs> but I think you'll be mistreating defenders for the whole season ahead as well so I'm looking forward to seeing what we've got from there and um, before we move on to the next team that I want to talk about in Serie A just talk to me from Juventus are you looking forward to seeing a, a renaissance in because a lot of their older players have gone, like we mentioned with Rabio, Mackenzie's gone as well. Um, mm. We're going to have a bit more in terms of, well, there's no Wojciech Szczesny as well. So they're mm. going for all the younger players. Douglas Louise transferred from Villa to Juventus this season. Mm. Let's say your initial thoughts on it as well. 
I think with Juventus, for me, I, obviously Juventus is that team that no matter who you supported, you always followed them throughout the years, you know, Champions League years, Serie A days. Um, I'm, what I love about, I was just looking at the lineup now. Normally, I could look at Juventus' lineup and I can tell you 10 of the players. But I'm looking, I'm seeing a Cambiasso, Gatti. I think he got rave reviews last season. Bremer, they weren't sure about because yeah. he was a Torino. He just looked like a big... And injury big, prone too as well. Injury prone as well. Um, and then obviously now, now it's nice to see Locatelli. Now we've got a partner in Kef Brand Suram. You yeah. think that's solid. And they just needed a refreshing start because I feel like everything with Juventus was a bit stale. You know, needed I mean? like a proper nothing, rebuild. Yeah, proper rebuild. Nothing really changed. And I'm looking at the, the front four. I wasn't sure on Timothy Ware. Yeah. But listen, he shut me up, you know. He's been performing very, very well. Um, I'm, you know, I'm never sure on like, these American players. <laughs> I never, never will be either. You, you know what I mean? You never know what you're going to get from them. And they're Unless not... they're goalkeepers. And Tim Howard, Brad Friedman. Yeah, you know I mean? Or Marcus well. Hanneman. Shout out to a real Red, Reading fan. Like Mark. Casey Keller as well. Spurs, oh! your, your team, your team, your team. Uh, big up, big up <laughs> team. Mr. Collier. Um, and you've got up front, you've got obviously Vladovic. But yeah, I like the look of that team. And you can see what Mota wants to do. Um, and I think they're going to push in this season. I know Inter are the main boys, but I think yes. uh, Juventus will really push them all the way. Absolutely. Now, we won't be talking about Inter Milan because we're so used to talking about Inter Milan as well. So mm. we're going to be talking about a player that has moved to Napoli and Napoli without Victor Osimhen as well. Mm. We've got to talk about Romelu Lukaku playing under mm -hmm. Antonio Conte once again. It's, there's some very crude jokes on, on the internet that I'm not going to repeat on the podcast as well about him being passed around Italy like a zoo and I'm like yeah yeah that, that, that's one of the nicer ones I think, but, uh, for Victor uh, for uh, Romelu Lukaku but Romelu Lukaku and Kovic are cover out Scalia that's a partnership I'm very intrigued to see and with Conte now playing this 3-4-3 formation as opposed to playing a 4-3-3 that was happening the last couple of years on the Napoli what can you expect? Can you expect them to be fighting for top four again? Or is it going to be one of those where they're going to be wheeltering around mid to top table as well? Because I'd like to see... I, I'm always a big fan of Robin Lukaku. Mm -hmm. A lot of people still don't agree with me, but I'm a fan of what he does because you appreciate a player for what they can bring, not what you mm -hmm. think they should bring as well. Yeah. You know, time and time again, Lukaku's a big game player in small games like for Napoli. This could be his Everton renaissance once again. That's how I'm going to look at it. Yeah. What do you think? I think I think Napoli will push for second. Yeah, I think is that type of thing. I feel like people can say what they want about Antonio Conte, but yeah. when he gets the players he wants and plays them in that system, he gets them cooking. They'll cause problems. And mm. Lukaku scored what was that last minute winning the other day as well. Yeah, not the best. So, yeah, so when he's when with Lukaku, what it is it? You can tell by how he starts the season with his new team how it's going to go. Mm. And I feel like he's going to have a good season if he stays injury fit. Is going to be so important to them. But I think the two wingers they've got next to them are very important. You've got um, your guy. I'm not going to pronounce his name. because You I've have been... to pronounce it. You've given, I've given you a year's notice to pronounce his name. Let's go for it. Um, Kavachi. Kavicha. 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 Kavara. 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 Skelia. Skelia. Kavara. Kavicha. Kavicha Kavraskelia. Come on now. Respect that. Respect That's it. what I'm doing. Yeah. I'm doing bilinguals for Georgians now. My Georgian, my Georgian colleagues will be like, Hamza, you butchered his name as well. Listen, I tell you, this is my babble. This is my babble, my 30 minute babble session, different languages. Wow. Uh, but I no, you know what? Team Duolingo like, for me. Isn't it? <laughs> Hence the green. And, uh, Neres. I think Neres came on the other day. Yeah, they made a change difference. The game. And he's been a forgotten player as well. So I look at that and I think, yeah, he can really get them to cook. Did they get into Europe last season? Yes. Did it, was it Europa? Or... I think it's Europa or Europa Conference. So. Yeah. So I think, listen, even Conference, they can play the young ones and focus on actually pushing mm. up the league. So, oh yeah, I think I think they're going to push um, Juventus. I think Juventus may win the league. That's my opinion. It sounds crazy. So, but no, I think it, it, it looks quite comfortable. Juventus mm. and Inter Milan look like the big deal this time. Yeah. Around, and then I think he'll push second and then battle Whoever, whoever's in that position. But yeah, Conte, listen, Conte is a world-class manager in my opinion anyway and he'll get the best of someone like a Lukaku. Lukaku just likes to feel loved. Yes. As, as, you know, as we know. So, you just know, like Van Tee Marshall as well. He's loved most under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and Van Ham because he was the main guy and then this is it, yeah. when Ronaldo and Cavani came in, he was like, oh, the, the yeah. bother isn't there anymore. Exactly, exactly, yeah. Um, now we're going to somewhere, we're going to Germany where there is a lot of love for Bayern Munich as we both know as well. Mm -hmm. And, Vincent Company is getting the narrative of being saved by his players after winning 
I think 2 0 against Freiburg recently, and Harry Kane scored a penalty, and Thomas Muller scored off the bench as well. Mm-hmm. I'm looking at the starting 11 with Sergio Gnabry, Michael Elise, Jamal Musiala, Mateus yes. Tell, all behind Harry Kane. And when I was saying in the Euros, Harry Kane works best when he's got runners either side of him. Mm-hmm. He's got four bloody good runners either side of him. So if he does mm-hmm. want to drop deep and play the balls through, he can do that, which is going to be incredible. And um, before we get on to Bayern Leverkusen, who recently lost as well, let me get your first thoughts on Vincent Kompany's Bayern Munich. Let me get your thoughts on Alfonso Davies staying at Bayern Munich this summer. Mm-hmm. And of course, Fulham's one of Fulham's best players in recent time, Jao Paulina, um, moving to Bayern Munich as well. I want to hear all your thoughts on Bayern Munich because I know you've got mm-hmm. to say about this as well. You know what? I think with Bayern, like, I think this is the season where they're, they're going to show Bayern Leverkusen and go, that was a blip. This is it yeah. now. Like you've had your time, you've had your enjoyable moment. You nearly got the treble, but now we're going to show you. And I think Vincent Kompany was kind of the one of the better managers for them to put in. You know, young, great ideas. Because you always players or, or fans always look at the club they're at the moment and go, he ain't going to do anything over there. But mm-hmm. we know what like he's got the experience of playing again with these big players and tactics and stuff like that. And I'm looking at the team now. I'm seeing. I love seeing Kim at centre back. Yeah. That I never got last season. I was like, <laughs> how is he not starting? Um, obviously, got Manuel Neuer, one of the greatest keepers of all time for me. Retired from international football as well. Exactly. So, so he finally gets the time to shine. In this is it. No, exactly. Um, and do you know, one player in this team, actually, I want to give props to is Pavlovich. Let's hear it. I never, I'm not going to lie, I know about a lot of players generally, but he's one of the few where I heard the name of well, Let me watch him. Yeah. I can't remember who they played. And I went, who the hell is that? Like, I could not believe how he's playing in the midfield. I'm looking now, they've got Pavlovich and Gnabry, Olise, Musiala, Tell. That is incredible. That that formation they've got, and I feel like, yeah, this is the one where they're going to, I think they're going to win the league at Canter. Mm. Like, generally, generally, I feel like come April, we're going to be like, yeah, Bundesliga's league has done already. And yeah, that, that seems solid, honestly. I mean, I was going to talk about Bayern, um, Bayern Leverkusen now. I mean, there's other teams you can talk about in the Bundesliga, mm. but we more or less have to because they lost their first league game under Xabi Alonso mm. um, in quite a while now as well. So we have to look at what happened there because they had an enthralling game mm. against RB Leipzig. And as we know, mm. I'm a big fan of Lois Dependa, who should have played more for Belgium mm-hmm. in the championships for me, the way I'm looking at it. But the fact that he scored the 80th minute goal and for once there was no last minute goal from Bayern <laughs> Leverkusen, it's going to be fun because mm. I'm looking at this Bayern Leverkusen team. I'm looking at the players that they've got on the bench as well. Last minute signing for Mukiele from um, RB Leipzig. No, from PSG, sorry. From PSG. PSG. He used to play at RB Leipzig. Mm. And now I'm looking at this team and I'm thinking, no one's really been bought from this Bayern Leverkusen team. No one's really missing. Um, there wasn't any big bids for Florian Works or Boniface or Grimaldo or Frimpong. Mm. It's kind of the same team as what, as what they've got. Yeah. Now we just need to see if they've got that mentality to continue fighting week in, week out on all fronts because they're going to be back in the Champions League. They're going to be back under a lot more pressure and a lot of teams will go forward thinking, you know what, now this is the time where we get to see if we can deal with the champions. And RB Leipzig, two or three games in, have already dealt with the champions with Shesko, Xavi Simmons, who's returned for another mm-hmm. season as well, Lois Appender in their front three. It was a very, very exciting scene to see what happened there as well. But with Bayern Leverkusen as well, do you think the pressure is going to get to Xabi Alonso? He's going to be a bit under the under the spotlight, I would say, a bit more now. What do you think, Matthew? You know what? I don't think the pressure really gets to them. But I feel like where they've lost now, you're going to see that moment where they're going to lose like a couple of more games. I feel like I was watching when Arsenal did the Invincible season and I think, was it Vieira or someone spoke and was like, you hit a point where you feel like you're never going to lose. Yeah. Like no matter what happens. So where they've lost so early on, this doubts will start to creep in now. And then players that you will see, like Grimelda having a great season, Frimpong doing what he was doing. Maybe, you know, maybe like he might not um you might not see him be that great now. You know what I'm trying to say? Because yeah, it's listen, as I said, it's gonna be Bayern's league, but you know you've said that about um Leipzig. So just to yeah. say, I'm looking at this team now, and they've got some ballers. Like, They've had some boulders. They've just been recognised recently. Like Hadara, I remember he was there before. Mm. Uh, I like Campbell in midfield. He's the busy body, isn't he? He's the one yeah. that runs around. Does he was job. good at the Euros too as well, Campbell, for Austria. Exactly. Heinrich's good. But, you know, there's a superstar defender in that team that people come to recognise. And the same way I big up William Saliba, I'm yeah. big up this guy, Lukeba, or the hard thing I say, Lukeba, Lukeba, Lukeba. Baller. Mm. Baller. Two, three seasons, you're going to see the biggest teams in the world going through him. 
solid, right. solid, solid centre back. But uh, yeah, I like that team. The goal I thought right. I thought that about Mohamed Simikan, but he moved yeah. to Saudi Arabia as well, so he's moved to Al Nasser. Well, he I think, did, didn't he? Yeah. yeah, I liked him. Was it the guy with the headband? Yeah, headband. Yeah. He had that thick hair as well. Yeah, like, oh, he's yeah. a good player on the ball, which was nice to see. I thought mm-hmm. it would have been good to see yeah. what was happening there as well. Um, but yeah, before we wrap up, I know you wanted to talk about La Liga, so by all means, I'll let you. I'll let you lead this one as well, Matthew. Let's hear it. You know what? I can't. As as I said, I'm I'm open and honest, guys. Like I I've watched a bit of Liga more because of the whole Mbappe saga mm. and everything like that. But then I saw recently Barcelona won Barcelona won seven nil. Yeah, yeah, I think I think they won seven. Almost finally registered as well. Yeah, yeah, oh, you know, finally, and I think he did. Uh, I don't know if it was regarding that, but I mean, I think he scored against someone. It was like this. He's a yeah. baller, absolutely. And I never knew he used to play at um, Barcelona. Yeah, homecoming, yeah, homecoming. Yeah, upcoming. So, but yeah, listen, this is the floor is yours with this one, Hamza. Let's hear it. This is your forte. I want to hear about how Kylian Mbappe is settled in because you need to talk to me because you know me. I know my ball. Mm. But I need someone of your level to let me know. How's he getting on? What's going on with him? I mean, Kylian Mbappe and Vinicius Jr. are like a house on fire. And I think Carlo Ancelotti is going through the teething, the teething bits of it now. Because a lot of the starting positions for Mbappe and Vinny Jr. are both on the left wing. Mm-hmm. Annoyingly, at times, Rodrigo will be drifted off there as well. So they're looking at a formation where they can get probably Valverde more on the right-hand side a bit more. So is there someone definitive on the right-hand side? And Mbappe and Vinny can interchange. And that's what Carlo Ancelotti loves doing best when he gives players that freedom to be interchanging between the two as well. Rodrigo may have to drop back a bit. But in terms of tactical awareness, without Jude Bellingham, it's kind of made it easier for Kylian Mbappe because he can take up more space dropping in if he needs to. And he knows for a fact uh, around the majority of La Liga defences, he will be faster than And if he's not, Vinicius Jr. will be faster than them. Rodrigo will be faster than them. And the way I'm looking at it now, Endrick's still going to be a bench player. Brahim Diaz, Arda Gula will still be bench players for now. I want to see Arda Gula start a lot more. But in terms of Kylian Mbappe, maybe Valverde on the right wing may be the best bet going forward as well because this can be the next big trio partnership that we want to get excited about in mm-hmm. football because it's been a while since we've seen MSN or BBC or Rio mm-hmm. Ronaldo Tevez. I think the most recent one that we could probably say definitively, annoyingly for me to say, is Salah, Firmino and Mane. That yeah. Definitively say, yep, they, we all knew their roles, we knew their mm-hmm. positions and that's what they bring to the table. And mm-hmm. honestly, it's been great to see what they've got going on. But the fact of the matter is, Barcelona are top. They've won every single game. Got some new young players from La Masia in the team. And it's going to be fun because they've got rid of a lot of players this summer. Players that they recently bought, like Ilkay Gundogan. That was yeah. a good transfer for them. Mm. And I'm wanting to see a bit more from the manager. I want to see a bit more from Robert Lewandowski. And I think, realistically speaking, it will take a lot of pressure off Lamine Yamal. Let the kid be a kid and let him play properly. He'll be absolutely fine for years. Do you think, though, do you think, that, Hamza, do you think this is the season where it's like, Barcelona are really at Real Madrid in terms of cup, league, like they're really going to battle them. We, we flick them. For me, it's about how both of them manage their Champions League minutes because we know the Champions League format will be a lot bigger. It goes straight yes. to January. And as you know, for the European nations, they have a winter break. They're not used to it. Man United, mm-hmm. Arsenal, Chelsea, Liverpool, Man City, mm-hmm. they're never really used to winter break because they'll have like a, a second leg of a Carabao Cup yeah, or they'll have yeah. an FA Cup replay and they'll, ha- they'll barely have a break. For, win- for the winter break in European football, that's going to be a big change for these teams as well. And the freshness won't always be there to start the same team. Mm-hmm. Out. So that's going to be something where the fitness of the players will be called into effect as well. And I think recently Fermin Lopez has been injured um, for Barcelona because he was at the Olympics, of course, as well. So that would be something where they will rely on every single player moving forward as well. And I want to test you as well. I've got one last Ooh. thing. Let's hear it. You always tell us about, or you tell me about these breakout players in different leagues and yep. players to watch out for. Give us all a player that watch the sky. You're going to hear more of him. Because you told me about one Dutch guy once I was left back at final. I'd never heard of him. And I started seeing his name pop up everywhere. I was like, oh, my God. Like, <laughs> Hamza knows. Hamza knows. You know what I mean? So, yeah, give us the La Liga, the La Liga you know, stand out. The one that the young players say, you know, watch this guy. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the one that I, I mean, I spoke about the um, the Belgian the Belgian guy from yeah. Juventus, who I'm a big fan of as well. Mm. The the player I want to shout out is not a big youngster right now, but is a player that hasn't got noticed as much. He's 23 years old. It's Alex Bayenia from Villarreal. He's been balling out because he was in the European Championship squad and never played, barely played mm. as a sub, I guess. Balling out is absolutely fantastic, and he went to the Olympic squad. He played there and he balled out. And that's when you had that incredible game in the final against France. And he was just mm. everywhere. 
and it was incredible to see what he really had to offer as well. So Alex Bayini is probably my player to watch, kind of like when I was talking a lot about like um, uh, Danny Olmo last season for RB Leipzig as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a big thing for this one as well. And right. when I was at Sevilla last season as well, I had the opportunity to go watch Sevilla versus Cadiz um, in Sevilla, which is incredible to see. So when I was looking at Sevilla, they had some really good players. I don't know how to pronounce his name, so I'm just going to make sure I don't butcher it as well. But there's a lot of players that will be coming through in this in this La Liga season where people are like, you know what, we've got to keep an eye on him. We've got to watch him. <clears throat> For me, I'll be like, I've got to watch all of these players because it's very enjoyable. Because remember, Sevilla are 19th at the moment. They are awful. They stink. Oh, they do not play well. And I they get so sad watching that because like, I Sometimes I don't because they always beat us in the Europa League. <laughs> no, but you know what is like I, as I said, like for us proper football fans, but like, mm. we watched these clubs growing up. Like, I remember the the Ramos, the Jesus Navas on the right wing, Diego Capel one side, Luis Luis Fabiano, Fredrik Canute, like that Sevilla side. And now you, I'm seeing that team languishing down there. I'm like, what's going on? Like, yeah, it's true. You know? Now the player that I wanted to speak about from uh, Sevilla. I, I've got his name up so I can pronounce it better. It's, it's, it's called Juan Lu Sanchez. So it's like Juan and yeah. then like L U after. So it's Juan Lu Sanchez. So he was also at the Olympics as well. <clears throat> he was on the bench at the game that I went to watch previously as well. He's 21 years old, creative midfielder, attacking midfielder. He can play at right back if he needs to as well, but he's got that freedom to kind of have that creativity. He's got a good pass on him. He's someone who can play on the wing if he needs to, but he's been playing more as a focal point, as an attacking player. <clears throat> and in some parts of the game, it worked, but I mean, they lost pretty convincingly to Girona recently, so that's not great to see what Sevilla are up to. But like you kind of said, you have a fin- an affinity to certain teams as well. And in the game against Villarreal earlier this season as well, they lost in the 90 plus fifth minute against Villarreal. Mm-hmm. Iosi Perez, who used to play for Real Betis, scored against them and just shushed the whole home crowd as well, which so is very, very awkward to see um as well but he that's a name been... i ain't heard for a while man Iose Perez. Perez. but yeah he was playing the, oh, as the right uh, in a midfield free as well and saul is in the team as well for Sevilla, so they've got a bit more experience oh, wow. okay. saul's left them uh atletico madrid for conor gallagher of course so goes to show there's a lot of transfer movements around mm. Europe that we're still yet to catch up with as well but yeah. for me that was something that i thought you know juan lu sanchez is a player for everyone to be watching out for in la liga this season Juan Luis Sanchez and Alex Bayena. I've heard the name. What, what's his position? Bayena is an attacking midfielder, so he plays yeah. in attacking mid, but he sometimes plays on the left as well, okay. um, which will be good fun as well. So mm-hmm. let me get that name up for the Juventus player because he has just been balling out recently. I'm going to make sure I just click. Yeah, here. that one. That that one. As soon as you said it, I noted it down because I was like, I need to watch this guy. Number this fifty-one, good. Samuel Mbengula. Okay. Okay. This is all good. That guy is Ham's a Zambian for those who's wondering. That's why he knows all this stuff. You know? I, I know about it as well. I've got my Zambian heritage in Osaka. I've got to go to Victoria Falls anytime soon as well. It needs to be done. Matthew's laughing like he didn't know that I know this kind of stuff as well. Like, come on now. My my African knowledge is better than most nah. people think. Uh, nah, it is, it is, it is. I read it, I read it. <laughs> nah, it's all good. And final one from Matthew and I. Matthew, talk to me about the England national team. We've got call-ups from Morgan Gibbs White and Angel Gomez as well. Are you expecting something great or is it one of those where we're like, oh, we're just going to blood in a few new players? What's your thoughts? I just think now is the time to just blood just different new players because... No as need to wakey too as well. Yeah, like, you know what? Because we talk about the Bellinghams and that, but I like seeing that. The Angel Gomez, a lot of people are probably shocked that mm. why is it about... If He's you still know so that, young as well. Also young, but if you know how good he is, let's mm. remember like how he was for United under 21. So I think he played a few games for the first team and he yes. went over to, was it Lille? Was it yeah. he went to yeah. and balled out, and he's a quality fan. I feel like Lee Carsley knows him so well because obviously, being the ex under 21 manager, you've yeah. got Noni Medwick in there. I think Gibbs White is going to be a big one for us. I feel like the time is right for him to, to break into that squad now, and we're going to see a lot more of it. And um, the only concern I have though is when you go to them big tournaments, like do we need more experience, like a more experienced manager, yeah. or are you right to go with you know someone that's a bit more experienced but knows the player as well? Um, so time will tell but yeah I, I, I like the squad a lot of people don't play even, it, even with the people that are pulled out as well so no Cole Palmer no Ollie Watkins no Foden what's your thoughts? I think we're still alright I, I think it's one of them where it's it's the time for young ones to shine if you're a young player now you're not even Medwake and you yeah. know Cole Palmer's out it's your time because you go to perform it. well Lee Carsley goes you know what next one I'm going to put you in and, and stuff like that so yeah I know we're in a good place we're I'm not going to say we're one of the best nations, but we're close. We're like progressing. We're like Arsenal. We're like yes. Arsenal. It's 
Let's ask, which is slowly but surely creeping. slowly building, <laughs> and we'll take first eventually. It's coming. It's coming. It will happen. Yeah. What will happen first though? Will Arsenal win the league or will England win a national trophy? What will happen first? Oh, Arsenal win a league, no doubt. No doubt. You see this there? You a Europa that? League. A Europa <laughs> League. <laughs> Any league. I said under 21s maybe, reserved to no matter. We win a league. <laughs> it could happen. It could happen, which would yeah. be great. But no, Matthew, thank you very much for this time on the podcast. As always, we'll be talking more about European football and Premier League football between Friday Night Counterattack and the back of that podcast. Make sure you follow both of us, subscribe and keep engaging our content because we create an engaging content across the season for you all to enjoy. We'll take care and we'll see you later. Goodbye.